Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sav and welcome to Bhed Surgery at Ease. So today, from today, we will be starting a new series on the radiographic interpretations. Okay, so we will be covering all type of radiographs, thorax, abdomen, appendicular skeleton, skull, like that we will be covering all the radiographs. You see this is not actually the radiology part, the radiology theory part is very very boring. So let us start from the interesting one, the fun one which will come um, in handy in your day to day clinic life. Okay, so let us start our fun. Today we will be studying the abdominal radiograph and how it is interpreted. Today we will be studying, actually this class will be regarding the normal abdominal radiograph. Okay, in the next class we will do the pathologies. So that you can correlate and you can become a good diagnostician in radiology. Before going to the class, know about the book which I am following. This is the textbook of veterinary diagnostic radiology, Thrall. Okay, this is a very good book regarding radiology. If you want, then you can download from the link. I will uh, give the link of all the books that I have collected in the description. You can uh, download the link. Okay, this is a very good book if you want to reference uh, for reference. It is a very subjective book, but it is a very good book regarding the concept. So let us start our class abdominal radiograph. Okay. So first, which systems do we check in the abdominal radiograph? So those uh, systems are basically the GI system, gastrointestinal system, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, the cecum, the colon, okay, the rectum, liver, spleen, urogenital system. Urogenital, okay, both urinary and genital system. Urinary system, kidney, ureter, then the bladder, urethra, and genital system, mostly the female genital system, that is the uterus. Okay, next we can also access the assess the vertebrates, especially the lumbar vertebra and the sacral vertebra. We will see all the pictures and we will also do multiple radiographs, normal radiographs, so that you will be thorough in this chapter or interpreting the abdominal radiograph. First of all, positioning. Positioning is very very important uh, while taking the radiograph. This first position is basically the right lateral radiographic position, radiographic position for right lateral abdominal radiograph. See here one thing you must remember that this hind limb or you can say pelvic limb, it should not be pulled caudally too harshly or you should not be pulled too hard. What will happen if you pull it too hard? This caudal portion of each, see abdomen can be divided into three portions. This is cranial abdomen, medial abdomen and the caudal abdomen. Specially the details of the caudal abdomen will get uh, disturbed or you can say you will have a very less serosal detail. We will discuss what is serosal detail. Okay, so ideally the pelvic limb should be remaining the perpendicular to the spine while taking the lateral radiographs. Okay, should not be pulled too tightly. This one is another important one, the ventrodorsal radiograph, ventrodorsal abdominal radiograph, the positioning. Here also, you see the handler is not pulling the limb or the pelvic limb caudally very harshly or very tightly or whatever you may call it. Okay, because if you will pull this pelvic limb caudally very highly, very harshly, then similarly, the caudal portion of abdomen, the organs present in caudal abdomen, the serosal detail will be lost. So, you cannot identify the organs present in the caudal abdomen. That is why you have to be very, very careful and this particular positioning is known as frog leg positioning. Okay, frog leg positioning. This should not be too tight, simply place the limb and simply widen it. Okay, don't pull it too hard towards caudal leg. Simply widen it and expose the abdomen. Okay, this is ventrodorsal. This is left lateral. I will tell you why left lateral is important. Okay, in subsequent slides. Okay, left lateral. This is dorsoventral. Dorsoventral. This is useless. Usually, they are not taken. It is only taken when the ventrodorsal is not possible. Suppose the animal has, having some chest problem or chest pain, he or she cannot breathe, then only the DB view is taken. Why the DB view is not useful in abdominal radiograph? Because if you take DB view, it will cause abdominal crowding. Abdominal crowding 
यू विल फाइंड वेरी पोर सेरोजल डिटेल पोर सेरोजल डिटेल विल डिस्कस व्हाट इज सेरोजल डिटेल ओके एंड आल्सो दिस लीव्स यू सी दिस लीव्स पेल्विक लीव्स विल कम इन एक्सरे ओके देयर विल बी सुपर इंपोजिशन ऑफ लीम ऑन ऑर्गन्स सुपर इंपोजिशन ओके दैट इज व्हाई द स्पेशली द डीवी व्यू is not taken in case of the abdominal red color these three are taken okay this is regarding the positioning next how many or how many numbers of radiograph you should take usually in earlier times or you will find in book uh, some books right lateral or you can say one radiograph but this is not ideal okay in some uh, books older books you may find using right, uh, right lateral but most of the books will say that you should at least i am telling at least get a right lateral and ventral dorsal this is two views it is always said that two views are very very important but you see many institution they take only the right lateral many a times but you should at least take right lateral and ventral dorsal okay the best is if you take three views that is right lateral left lateral or ventral dorsal this three is very very important if any organ is missed in any one of the radiograph then you can identify in the later one suppose some organs are left in right lateral when you will take left lateral some organs those organs might so okay you see in the radiograph if you will take a radiograph of an uh, abdomen you may not find all the organs in single radiograph okay if you will take multiple radiographs one organ missed in one radiograph can be discussed or can be seen in the lateral radiograph okay the main thing why the right lateral and left lateral radiographs are taken because to evaluate the stomach stomach and up to some extent duodenum duodenum you see stomach this is stomach okay this is stomach stomach the, this is cardia this is fundus this is body this is pylorus this fundus is present on the left side of the body and the pylorus is present in the right side of the body so when you will take the right lateral radiogram the right side will be towards the earth okay so the pylorus will be towards the earth sorry the pylorus will be towards the earth and the fundus will be towards the sky like this what will happen if any any a time the stomach contains fluids okay so the fluids will migrate towards down towards the pylorus this is pylorus this is fundus okay so the gas in the stomach will be accumulated in fundus these gas you know they are a very good contrast mediums so by this the fundus can be evaluated very nicely but the pylorus can't be cut it will contain fluids it will have some soft tissue opacity so the contrast is not better so how to evaluate the pylorus simply reverse it if you will take for left lateral left lateral what will happen the pylorus will be up or towards the earth and the stomach or the fundus will be towards the ground okay so the fluids will migrate by gravitation to the fundus and the pylorus will accumulate the gas sometimes from the pylorus the gas will enter the duodenum so the pylorus and the duodenum can easily be evaluated because gas is a very good contrast medium to evaluate the organs sometimes you have to push air in bladder like pneumocystography okay like that the so natural gas present in the stomach can be used as diagnostic tool to evaluate the pylorus and the duodenum in case of left lateral radiograph we'll see the pictures also no need to worry just understand the concept that is why three radiographs are taken the right lateral left lateral and ventral dorsal okay now you understood next the normal anatomy these two images i have taken from internet you will search veterinarian key this is a very good website for the anatomical structures see this is if you will remove the muscle this is the picture here this is the liver this is the liver see this is liver left lateral and left central lobe here you can see this is 
stomach this is stomach okay the entire structure here this is spleen you can see the spleen okay spleen has a head then the body this is tail head body and the tail these are the small intestines here what you see these are the small intestine this is the bladder and here the black structure is the kidney okay but in radiograph this does not look like this instead this does look like this okay what see this is liver cross sectional view actually this is liver this is stomach here this is the spleen this is the tail of the spleen here you see the small structure triangular structure this is head of the spleen most of the time the body of the spleen is not seen in lateral radiograph okay now these are the small intestines these are the small intestine this is the colon this is the descending colon this is descending colon here it becomes the transverse colon and here then it will the ascending colon usually it is from ascending then transverse for descending but you can go from behind okay descending then the transverse then the ascending colon here this structure is kidney this is kidney here the bladder all these structures we will see in the radiograph also you should have the picture of this normal anatomy in your mind so that you can know the difference between the organs or the position of the organs in the radiograph okay now serosal detail what is serosal detail you see all the abdominal organs the present in abdomen they have a serosal layer so how well how conspic conspicuously you can identify those borders or those serosal margins is known as serosal details in layman's word if you are identifying the organs very nicely that means the serosal details is very good if you are not able to identify the organs then this it has poor serosal detail okay so the contributing factor towards serosal detail is actually the peritoneal fat this is the no most important factor the peritoneal fat okay this fat provide a contrast medium to identify the organs how can you see white okay you see white because there is a black border or some color border or how can you see a black black absorbs all the light how you are observing the black because there is some border okay like that these fat the peritoneal fat provides a constant con uh, contrast medium through which you can see the organs we will see how these fats uh, provide a good contrast medium okay most of the peritoneal fats are mesenteric fat and the omentum fat in case of cats this is very peculiar cats they tend to have high peritoneal fat due to which there is a phenomenon known as jejunal crowding jejunal crowding in mid abdomen it occurs in mid abdomen actually this is a sign of foreign body obstruction okay but in case of cat it is normal because they contain high peritoneal high amount of peritoneal fat okay so actually this jejunal crowding is not sole sign of obstruction there are many more signs i will discuss also so this should not be as the uh, interpreted in case of cat as the foreign body obstruction okay next is falciform fat this is also important in case of cat abdominal radiograph okay in case of cat the falciform ligament contains high amount of fat that is why liver is slightly displaced dorsally sometimes they are misinterpreted as peritoneal fluid we will see the pictures also they are also evident those fat is known as falciform fat it is uh, found or you can say it is prominent in case of cats next is retroperitoneal fat which actually gives a contrast to the kidneys okay so these fat tissue actually act as contrast to the abdominal organs you see this is a uh, radiograph having a peritoneal fat you can say having peritoneal fat peritoneal fat this is a organ where there isn't no peritoneal fat no peritoneal fat look at the details here you can almost identify all type of organs we will also identify the organs you see how nicely all the organs like here is the bladder is the kidney 
small intestine, colon, you can identify all these organs. Okay, this is serosal detail. This is actually a image of cat, radiograph of abdomen of cat. Here, you see there isn't any peritoneal fat. That is why you will find very poor serosal detail. You cannot identify any organ. Some gas filled intestines are uh, there because of gas filling, they are identifiable, otherwise, they are not identifiable. It happens when you will have less peritoneal fat or no peritoneal fat. It happens in case of young animals. If it is, this is actually a X-ray of a puppy. Okay, puppy. Young animals you will find poor serosal details, which is normal. Okay, and also you will find in emaciated patients. Emaciated patients. It is abnormal. Emaciated patients. Okay, in young animals, another theory in a books you will find in young animals they usually contain brown fat. Okay, rather than the white fat. Brown fat, brown fat has a consistency like soft tissue. That is why they, are, they uh, you can say the the soft tissue of like kidney or intestine they match with this contrast. Okay, that is why they are not visible. Okay, so white fat has fat consistency, consistency, but a brown fat they have soft tissue consistency. That is why you cannot identify among all other soft tissues. Okay, so. You remember, in, if you are uh, doing X-ray of young animals, you may not find a good serosal detail which is not pathologic structure, or you should not declare it as some pathology is there in the abdomen. But in case you must see animal, you may check for other signs. Okay. Now let us uh, another thing. The falciform. I told you falciform uh, fat. Here you see this is the falciform fat. This is the region of falciform fat. In case of cat, that is why the liver is slightly dorsal slightly displaced here is the liver we will discuss all these things okay and here there is retroperitoneal fat okay the kidneys that is where they are visible okay now let us identify the organs they are very very important to identify all the organs here i have developed a system you can note down this system and through which you can see each and organ first of all we should name the vertebra you should name from the caudal to cranial. Okay, this is sacral vertebra. This is L7, uh, L7, L6, L5, L4, L3, L2. This is L1. This is theta. Okay, name the vertebra. First is liver. Let us see the liver. Here, some portion is actually left. We will see other radiograph also. This is liver. This is liver okay liver is the largest solid organ of the abdomen okay liver entirely resides inside the coastal arch this is coastal arch so most part almost entirely it remains inside the coastal arch only the cordoventral border this is cordoventral border it may protrude outside the coastal arch but the length of this protrusion is very very less compared to whole other structure Okay, so if you are finding too much of protrusion, you may uh, take this case as hepatomegaly or hepatic enlargement. Okay, now see another thing you should know about if you can identify whether this is hepatic enlargement or small liver, microhepatica. Okay, hepatomegaly or microhepatica. That is gastric axis. What is gastric axis? You see, this is pylorus, here this is pylorus, and here this is the stomach. This is the stomach. This is the stomach. We will go stomach, but I am uh, explaining what is gastric axis. So, what will happen? You will draw the line from, from this is fundus, this is pylorus. We will draw a line from fundus to the pylorus. All the nowadays it is computer radiography. So, you can draw a line, straight line, and you can edit also, you can measure also. Okay, so it is not a problem. So, when you will draw the line, it should be either the perpendicular this spine or it should be parallel to the ribs you see it is parallel to the ribs okay it means liver is normal if this axis deviates caudally then it is a case of hepatomegaly that means liver is enlarged pushing the stomach towards caudal side okay so if the axis is deviated to the cranial side then you may notice or you may say that there is case of microhepatica. 
these are relative terms so if you are finding some slight change you may not jump into the conclusion of hepatomegaly or microhepatica you have to uh, do other tests also if it is hepatomegaly you can go for the liver function test like that or you can take history and then you can declare uh, hepatomegaly so these are basically the guidelines or you can say basically the landmarks through which you, uh, you will reach a concrete diagnosis so now you understood what is gastric axis okay so now the liver part is over this is liver next is spleen you see in i told you the head of the spleen and the tail of the spleen are visible in the lateral radiogram but in case of cat the tail of the spleen is usually not visible okay but the head is visible here you see this is this structure this is the head of the spleen okay i am removing now see okay can you appreciate this one this this is the head of the spleen okay head of the spleen is usually fixed by gastrosplenic ligament but the tail of the spleen is not fixed it is moved by group. okay <coughs> after spleen let us go for stomach i told you about the stomach this is stomach okay this is right lateral that is why the fundus part here you can see accumulation of gas while pylorus is a like solid structure or soft tissue structure okay so this is stomach okay we'll when we'll do deal with the left and lateral radiograph there is uh, some comparison we'll discuss about the stomach more okay this stomach next small intestine this is small intestine these are the small intestines this large one is uh, the large intestine we'll go into large one, but this is the region of small intestine i told you about a term jejunal crowding you see if you divide this abdomen into three equal parts this is cranial abdomen this is medial abdomen this is caudal abdomen okay so this is known as jejunal crowding in case of cat due to high peritoneal fat you will find jejunal crowding as a normal feature but in case of dogs usually it means there might be some obstruction okay so now you saw the intestines we will discuss how you can identify duodenum in left lateral we will see the pictures also okay so this is small intestine another thing about small intestine you see here is a small intestine okay so you measure this diameter usually the diameter measured where you think small intestines are thickest okay if you think this is the thickest one you measure this one okay so the diameter of small intestine in case of a dog dog should not exceed 1.6 times the height of height height of l5 body of l5 here is l5 okay this is the height of l5 in computer radiography you can easily measure it will come in mm like that okay so measure this one and measure the highest diameter of small intestine so compare this one this diameter should not exceed 1.6 time of this height of the body of the l5 if you are finding it is more than 1.6 times then there might be a chance of obstruction okay similarly in case of or another thing also it should not exceed two times the width of rib width of rib this is the width of rib a small one this is width of the rib okay so it should not exceed two times width of rib in case of dog but in case of cat okay in case of cat the diameter of small intestine should not exceed two times of the height of l2 okay body of the l2 diameter of small intestine this diameter should not exceed twice the height of l2 this is the height of l2 so this is the diameter this should not exceed twice the time of l2 if the diameter is higher than the twice of the height of the l2 then we may suspect of obstruction in case of cat okay remember this dog and cat comparison okay this is all about the small intestines now we'll go for the large intestine large intestine has two parts cecum and colon also rectum okay cecum is usually not visible in case of cats okay it is conical in structure it rarely contains gas okay but the colons are very much visible in case of cat uh, comparison to dogs okay so cecum we'll see in dogs okay 
and there is a dog radiograph also you will see now the colon colon has three parts the ascending and the transverse and the descending will come from backward you see this this is descending this is descending you see this is descending here this is transverse this is transverse and now here is the ascending this is very nicely visible in case of cats okay the three structures of colon uh, here there will be rectum this is rectum okay so this is large intestine next kidney see here is one kidney this is one kidney this is another kidney there are two kidneys okay the so cranial one is right kidney the caudal one is left kidney right kidney in may, many of the radiographs you may not find right kidney due to superimposition of liver and other organs you may not find but the left kidney is more consistent and it's almost found in every radiographs okay and left kidney is usually more mobile than the right kidney okay sometimes left kidney may be present like slightly ventral you will see the radiographs also. I, we have some good radiographs okay so this is kidney ureter ureter is usually not visible i will discuss about the length of the kidney uh, by that you can identify what is whether it is renomegaly or not we will we'll see the vd radiograph that is calculated in vd radiograph okay uh, ureter ureter is not visible normally next urinary bladder see here is urinary bladder this is urinary bladder okay this is uh, apex this is body and this is neck the urinary bladder in case of uh, cats are ellipsoid in nature while it is oval in dogs and dogs but when it is fully distended in dogs it becomes ellipsoid okay so urinary bladder very easy to identify then prostate prostate is not found or is not seen in case of uh, cat abdominal radiograph but it is seen in dog radiograph when it is enlarged in normal it is not found in dog also or it is not seen in dog abdominal radiograph also urethra it is not seen in normally but if you are doing contrast like iodinated uh, contrast medium that is positive contrast then you can identify the urethra okay uterus and ovary they are normally not visible so if you want to evaluate uterus and ovary you should go for ultrasonography uterus may be visible if it is a case of pyometra or pregnancy okay pyometra is pathological pregnancy is physiological testis testis are not visible this is basically the digestive system the urogenital system okay so you understood in this radiograph we have several radiographs we will discuss or we will see all these things and one thing i missed about the large intestines okay this is large intestine this diameter of the large intestine diameter of large intestine in case of dog it should not exceed the length of length of l7 vertebra body of l7 vertebra this is l7 this is the length of the l7 so in case of dog this diameter should not or the di maximum diameter where you think the diameter is highest okay like here is the highest okay so the this diameter of the large intestine should not exceed this length of l7 okay body of the l7 similarly in case of cat this diameter should not exceed or you can say in case of cat <coughs> should not exceed 1.48 times the length of body of 5 l5 okay this is l5 this is the length of l5 body of length of the body of the l5 so in case of cat it should not exceed 1.48 times l5 so you simply have to compare or you can take a ratio if it is coming from above 1.48 or in case of dog it is coming above the length of the l7 then it may be case of mega colon okay mega colon this is just uh, pathological thing mega colon okay this is about large intestine this uh, we covered all thing okay now we'll see all the radiographs and we'll try to identify all the organs okay see this is a radiograph let us identify all the organs first we'll name the vertebra this is sacrum this is l7 l6 l5 l4 l3 l2 this is l1 l1 okay next liver you see here is the liver this is liver okay liver 
next structure is spleen here is the spleen this is the spleen okay stomach see here the stomach is slightly enlarged you see here this is slightly enlarged the stomach is slightly enlarged okay maybe due to the dog has taken some heavy meal like that okay it is not much of filled with gas but it mostly may filled with fluid matter there is some gas here accumulated in the fundus part okay this is pylorus here it is pylorus this pylorus okay and uh, i told you about gastric axis you remember okay if i will line draw a line from fundus to the pylorus you see it is perpendicular to the spine that means liver is fine simply the stomach is enlarged okay and also it is parallel to ribs okay this is this is the uh, funda between um, for the uh, hepatomegaly or microhepatica the gastric axis okay we see the stomach and also we saw the fundus next we will see the small intestine okay these are the small intestine all of them are small intestines okay loops of the small intestines next cecum you see can you see a u shaped structure here this is radiograph of dog right lateral radiograph of dog see this thing this u shaped structure this is nothing but cecum it is semi circular in nature uh, in shape it may be c shaped or u shaped whatever you may call it this is cecum it is usually filled up with gas and it can be visible in normal survey radiographs okay this is cecum next colon here the colon is not much of clear uh, you can see up to here this is the descending colon this is descending colon okay next we will go for kidney kidney here only one kidney is visible you see this one mostly it is left kidney but you should not identify as whether left or right simply say it is kidney only one kidney is visible but i told you mostly the left kidney is most consistent in regarding the visibility of the kidney in survey radiographs okay this is kidney one kidney is perfectly visible ureter ureter is not visible normally urinary bladder you see here this is urinary bladder okay you can see it is like this due, due to the superimposition of some organs but it is usually the oval in shape oval in shape prostate prostate normally in dogs is not visible because it because it resides inside the the pelvic canal okay normally it is not visible we'll see if it is prostatic enlargement with some radiographs you will see the prostate next urethra urethra is normally not visible uterus ovary and testis they are normally not visible okay let us go to another radiograph this is the vd view this vd view is for to know the renal thing you see in lateral view one kidney special the kidney which is away from the beam may get magnified that is why the vd view is taken to measure the length of the kidney the here the kidneys are very very nicely presented you see this is one kidney this is another kidney you can also see the ureter this is ureter okay why because here the contrast agent is given intravenous pyelography is the term through which contrast mediums are injected into the blood vessel and it will be filtered by the kidney and the kidney can be viewed very very nicely okay so this is the right and left kidney this is the right kidney right kidney is more canal placed and the left kidney is caudally placed okay so i told you about regarding the length of the kidney from the cranial pole to the caudal pole the length is measured okay this length in case of dog in case of dog this length should not exceed or it falls in the range of 2 falls in the range of 2.5 to 3.5 times length of the l2 okay this is l7 l6 l5 l4 l3 l2 l1 this length okay this length it should in case of dog this length it should not it fall in range between 2.5 to 3.5 times of the length of l2 if it is more than 3.5 times it may be case of renomegaly in case of cat it should range between 2.4 to 3.3 times 3.0 3 times of l2 
okay in case of intact uh, cats it may go up to 3.2 times but it's all right if it is coming 3.1 does not mean that there is renal megaly it's just a reference value for your reference okay if it come into four times then there is some problem okay so this i want to show you in the vt view okay now here you see the prostate it is visible in case of canine radiograph when it is enlarged here you see this is prostate this is prostate here this is prostate one thing about the prostate measure the diameter of the prostate here you will measure the diameter of the prostate okay next you measure from this is sacral promontory this is sacral promontory this is pubis bone join the line okay this is this line so this diameter of the prostate it should not exceed 70% of this length between the sacral promontory and the pubis okay it should be less than 70% if it is more than 70% it may be a case of prostatic enlargement or there if it is more than 90% then be sure there is some lesion like cyst or abscess or neoplasm in the prostate okay and also you will find this prostate will putting pressure on the rectum here here you can see it puts puts pressure on the uh, colon this rectum colon okay the joining point so you now know about the prostate prostate is only visible in case of canine radiographs okay so this is prostate now we'll see some other radiographs also see here this is uterus this is the case of pyometra okay all the organs are shifted cranially entire abdomen is filled with the uterus containing pus this is pyometra this is a norm uh, pathological finding normally the uterus is not visible okay see this is another radiograph let us find the organs you can pause the video and find the organs then you can watch it okay so here uh, you can say this is a good serosal detail okay though it is not as good as compared to the other radiographs but it is good okay so here you can see this is liver this is liver here you can say there is stomach okay and here there is spleen this is spleen okay i am taking randomly you can search or you can go one by one okay so here is one kidney another kidney is very faint you see you may not appreciate this left kidney this is left kidney this is right kidney i told you left kidney is slightly mobile than right kidney it may come uh, more ventral okay so you may not appreciate this left kidney okay here okay. so when you will adjust your eye when you will see hundreds of radiograph you can identify slightly faint change in the sides of gray okay it's not 50 sides of gray <laughs> okay radiographic sides of gray this this is the left kidney and here it is the right kidney okay so i told you about and uh, the descending colon is here descending colon is here this is the bladder okay these are the organs next we'll see there are many radiographs we will see you will be in thorough regarding the abdominal radiographs see this is a radiograph can you tell which species this is falciform fat this is cat radiograph of cat cat okay so this is liver this is liver you can see here liver this is stomach this is stoma this part is pylorus here this is this one is the spleen the head of the spleen here is kidney here is one kidney there is here another kidney this one is uh, sorry right kidney this one is left kidney okay now colon this is descending colon up to this this is descending colon then the transverse colon up to this and here the ascending colon okay here is the bladder see this one is the bladder okay and here all these are intestines small intestines okay mostly they are jejunum and ileum okay so you identified all the organs 
ओके वेरी वेरी नाइस इन कैट रेडियोग्राफ इट इज वेरी नाइस बिकॉज द कॉन्टेंट फैट दैट इज वाई यू विल फाइंड वेरी गुड सरोजल डिटेल ओके नेक्स्ट लेट अस सी दिस इज बैरियम कॉन्ट्रास्ट रेडियोग्राफी सी सिंपली सी दी स्ट्रक्चर्स स्पेशली जी आई केस हियर इज द स्टोमर एंड हियर इज द डो डेनम ओके एंड यू सी हियर इज द स्टोमर डो डेनम दिस इज जेजुनम well mostly highest uh, length jejunum here is the ilium you see the bd uh, view here is the stomach then it comes you see remember this one Jeju, uh, the duodenum is on right hand side okay so this is duodenum duodenum this is jejunum here is ilium okay see here now uh, barium is washing out from the jejunum and ilium here is the cecum this one is cecum this is ascending colon Sorry. So this is ascending colon. This is ascending colon. This is transverse colon. This is the descending colon. Let us see in the BD view. Usually the colon is question mark set. Okay. This is question mark set. Okay. Or Seifert's hook like this set. Okay. This is the cecum here. Is the cecum. This is the ascending transverse and the descending colon. Okay. You got it. Now you can identify in the radiographs okay there are many more radiographs okay for you after this class you will not feel any uh, difficulty in identifying the at least identifying the organs okay pathology is different thing at least you can identify all these organs you see why the left versus right lateral okay let us see here this is the photograph of the same animal you see here the, let us identify the organs okay quickly this is liver it is present entirely inside the rib cage or you can say costal arch this is spleen here this is kidney this is stomach this is stomach okay next bladder is not slightly visible here is the bladder actually okay this is another kidney this is right kidney this is left kidney okay this is the spleen these are the small intestines and here is the descending colon okay so these are the structures let us see what we have we have come to see you see here the pylorus is fluid consistency you can say soft tissue consistency but the you see the gas it is accumulated in fundus okay so this is right lateral you can say right lateral okay right lateral when we will take left lateral you see here the fundus is very clearly visible now now the body or you can say the fundus is not so much visible because all the fluids has been migrated to fundus and it has become fluid consistency or you can say soft tissue consistency but gas present in the duoden uh, sorry in the fundus they make uh, better contrast or you can say fundus is now clearly visible if there is any obstruction in the fundus it can be easily identified okay and gas will enter in the duodenum you see here duodenum is now clearly visible this is duodenum here you cannot find the duodenum duodenum is not that clearly visible because the gas or oh sorry the uh, pylorus is filled with fluids it will go to the duodenum how uh, the fluid is same as the soft tissue consistency uh, consistency so you may not find the appreciate the duodenum but here you can very nicely appreciate the duodenum see okay so this is why you should take the left and the right lateral radiograph okay let us identify other organs nicely this is liver this is spleen okay here is one kidney another kidney is not that uh, visible but here is another one okay okay bladder is slightly visible here these are small intestines and here is the descending colon okay it is superimposed with the duodenum next we have sufficient number of radiographs let us practice and uh, i told you about the best is left lateral versus right lateral plus bt three radiographs you will see how amazing they are this is a very good article regarding the application of three radiographs rather than two radiographs it's a very good article if you want you can search and download and you can also study 
सी फर्स्ट विल गो टू दी राइट लैटरल दिस राइट लैटरल लेट अस आइडेंटिफाई दी ऑर्गन दिस इज लीवर ओके हियर यू सी दी स्प्लीन ओके नेक्स्ट स्टोमक हियर इज द स्टोमक यू सी हियर दिस इज द स्टोमक ओके हियर यू कैन सी अकोमलेशन ऑफ गैस इन फंडस पार्ट ओके बिकॉज दिस इज राइट लैक्टर ओके नाउ हियर इज द ब्लैडर दिस इज ब्लैडर हियर इज द वन किडनी कैन यू सी दिस थिंग दिस हियर हियर इट इज ए लेट मी रिमूव इट सो यू कैन एप्रिशिएट सी हियर दिस इज द हेड ऑफ द स्प्लिन दिस इज द टेल ऑफ द स्प्लिन दिस इज द हेड ऑफ द स्प्लिन हेड ऑफ द स्प्लिन इज प्रेजेंट डॉर्सल एंड कॉडल टू दिस स्टोमक ओके so you will find this is kidney i told you this is one kidney is visible other kidney is not that much visible and here this is the descending colon and here some intestinal loops these are some intestinal loops this is left lateral i told you when you will take left lateral you will find the fundus it is see here the fundus is now clearly visible and the duodenum you see this is duodenum this duodenum is now very very clearly visible sorry see this is duodenum okay this is duodenum now let us identify you see here you saw only one kidney is visible but here the two kidneys are visible here is one kidney and here is another kidney okay if you will take multiple radiographs you can identify or you can say you can appreciate the kidney here is the spleen this is liver this liver this is stomach here is the bladder this is bladder some intestinal loops are superimposed and here is the descending duodenum okay these two are kidneys one kidney is another kidney okay you understood now let us do see in the vd view here vd view this is one kidney kidney is nicely presented and here is the liver this is liver this is stomach this is stomach okay can you appreciate the kidney okay it is very delicate and very you can say very the sides of the gray is very very the sides are very very narrow okay so we have to very very careful very very vigilant okay so this is descending colon this is descending colon next this is transverse colon now this is the ascending colon okay here the duodenum is not so uh, what what you can say not so clearly visible can you identify here the structure see here this is the right kidney this is right kidney here here this is left kidney okay sometimes taking multiple radiographs can make you identify other organs which may be missed in one radiograph and here this is head of the spleen head of the spleen okay you identified all the organs okay now i hope you are becoming pro <laughs> not pro at least you can able to diagnose or you can say see different organs this is the last radiograph first we will do the right lateral okay let us identify the organs this is liver here is the stomach basically the fundus part okay can you tell what is this head of the spleen this is tail of the spleen here is actually one kidney here is one kidney okay if you are very sharp enough you can identify this one see here we one thin margin this is one kidney okay and here this is descending duodenum here comes descending duodenum then becomes it transverse then the ascending duodenum can you or define this c shaped organ uh, organ c shaped this one this is cecum okay you may not find in all radiographs but if you take multiple radiographs you may find all organs okay this cecum here is the bladder this is bladder these are the small intestines okay now left lateral you see the fundus the entire structure here is now stomach the fundus part uh, sorry this is pylorus the fundus part is now filled with fluid which is soft tissue consistency 
so you will find white coloration or this uh, gray shading will be more you can say more radio opaque okay and here due to presence of gas the fund uh, the pylorus is now clearly visible see this is pylorus okay now from pylorus what originates the duodenum you see this duodenum very 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 clearly visible now okay that is the advantage of taking the right lateral as well as left lateral you can identify the fundus and the pylorus and the duodenum let us identify other organs you see here the tail of spleen is not clearly visible okay if you will take multiple radiographs then you can identify the organs okay here is one kidney here here is another kidney okay two kidneys this is right kidney this is left kidney this is descending duodenum this is descending duodenum it is going like this okay it is going like this this is descending this is transverse this is ascending and then here you see this is c shaped thing which is basically the cecum okay now here this is urinary bladder okay now i hope this is liver i hope you are now able to identify different organs and remember those positions okay liver near to liver it will you will find the stomach okay here this is liver near to liver you will find the stomach then uh, liver stomach is uh, liver usually the pylorus liver pylorus and spleen they are usually placed near to <coughs> near to each other okay this is spleen next the vd view okay this is the last one in vd view we see see here the spleen is now very clearly visible you see this spleen this is entirely this spleen head body and tail okay this is the advantage of taking multiple radiographs okay here is this liver this is liver 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 this is stomach you can see the stomach here the stomach okay this is pylorus and here is the duodenum can you identify this one this is the duodenum this duodenum okay see this structure this filled gas filled loop or you can say gas filled organ this is duodenum okay now see the colon this is the descending colon this is descending colon this is the transverse colon and this is the ascending colon and here see the cecum this is cecum okay now i hope that you all have now be familiar with the abdominal radiograph and how to identify the organs and where to find them okay and also you might have noticed the difference between the dog radiograph or the canine radiograph and the cat radiograph or the feline radiograph okay so this is all about today this is all about the abdominal radiograph normal abdominal radiograph next class will go for the normal thorax then we will go for the abnormal or you can say pathological abdominal radiograph and also the pathological thorax radiograph okay so this is all about today if you like this video or if you think this will be helpful please do share with your friends juniors and colleagues or seniors okay and also you can like share and subscribe to this channel so we'll meet in the next class till then tata bye bye take care